Hi everyone, this is Simon and today I'm bringing you uh, the game called Targi. Targi is only for two players and this is the Z-Man games or the Z-Man edition. It's also out by Cosmos and uh, this particular version has a picture of a man, because his moustache there and uh, probably another man, some camels. I say probably because in the Cosmos edition I would say it's slightly harder potentially to tell and I think uh, for that reason it might be a bit more... Uh, neutral in a positive light. So you have a rule book, you have some meeples, Targi means a uh, blue tribe, hence the blue on the box, hence the blue meeples as a colour you can be. So you're going to come with lots of pieces here, I'm just going to chuck them out and show you uh, what you can do with them. So what I recommend you do is initially sort them because you're going to be taking from this pool. So in the game of Targi we're representing a tribe of let's say nomadic people, hunter-gatherers, and the aim of the game is to get the most victory points. Victory points are gathered by doing a number of different things. And I'll give you an example of those on a course of one turn. These things here are representative of points that you can get. Now, this box uh, is nice. I do like the box. Having said that, if you were to bag everything up individually, you're probably going to struggle with the inserts as well. So you might want to consider taking that out if you want to do that. What I'm doing here is definitely not essential, um, in fact we didn't do it when we played it yesterday, but by doing so it's just a bit quick having to sift through what things are. And just whilst I'm at it, if you need to look up different kind of points values, they're all the same size. That's good and bad. It's good because you could be hiding what you have and you couldn't see uh, necessarily um, for your opponent uh, how many points you've been accumulating as it's literally there in front of you. The game was designed uh, by a person who teaches maths and he's married with two kids, as it says in the blurb, I think in 1973. I believe this is his first game as well. This is Andreas Stieger or Steiger. And uh, what I'm picking up now is not rice, um, it's something else. Uh, I can't recall now. It's not sugar, it's not oats. It's something that I'll get to in a moment. But over here we have dates. Again, you can call them whatever you wish but it's particularly called dates. Um, salt, that's what it is. So the white stuff is salt. Again, as long as you're consistent. Now when I lay out these cards, there are two ways to lay them out, as you'll see. You can lay them out with wording on them, or you can do them that wording. They recommend you do it with wording initially, just so you have an idea. So hopefully some of these things are just in shots. Uh, again, you don't need to have them in piles, and if you do, I recommend having them in two, just so you don't spill them. This is a first player marker, to say we're starting that first round. And that first round is quite even. So you're gonna have a stack of tribe cards, which look like this. You're gonna have a stack of goods. Now at the bottom of these goods, you're gonna have what you use to lay out the board. So here are the goods cards, I'll come back to them. I'll come back to the tribe cards. So what you have here, these are the 16 cards that make the layout of the game. I think I may have left an extra one. There, oh no, here it is. Okay, so you start off by doing them in numerical order. So this is 16, which you say, well, that's not number one. You stick at the corner, and that basically means that's the, the final part of the game. And I know it's out of sight presently, but don't worry about that. So we have the noble. Now, I'll come on to that. That's going to be where the robber starts from. The robber is a kind of a time marker. This is what I talked about. Dates on the front, one date on the back. We're using it with the text side up. We go on to the next card. So that's card three, three there. And then I think we believe we start going down. Now, as you can see, uh, we've gone from the, the water, let's say the oasis, down into, say, the forest. We're going further into the forest. And now we're reaching the mountains. Maybe pepper is more common in the mountains, I don't know. These raid cards. We have Feta Morgana, we have the Silversmith, Pepper, another raid card, the Caravan, the Travel Expedition, and one Salt. So um, if you look, you'll see there's two Pepper, there's two Salt, the different things of each type out there. So that's how you lay out every single game. Now you don't have to lay them out. Uh, this way up, like I say, for that first game, and then you can consider swapping them. I think iconography, especially with so much text to see on camera, might be a preferential way of doing it. So you then shuffle and deal out these uh, tribe cards. Tribe cards go in the corners or the 
one's touching the edge, shall I say, actually, like a like a star, you might say. Then the good cards go in everywhere else. So this goes something like this. Then the first player can play somebody out. And I explained why and how someone thinks about where they want to play something. Now the game clicks in terms of why they'll realize it's such a good game in a moment. But we're gonna have player two over here with their three tribesmen or tribes people. And player one, the other side of this line, where we'll have player one. So I mentioned uh, Mr. Robber. He starts over there. And uh, so the game ends when um, one of two things happening. At the end of the rounds, once I've placed out stuff, once it's been placed out, we've resolved stuff, the robber moves across one space. When it gets all the way to just reaching here, that's the final round. Now they move one space and we'll do our, and then we've done our stuff. And then there's another one on this space. You've got to start paying stuff. You've got to pay a good or one victory point. Here it's two goods or a victory point. Here it's three goods or two victory points. So what this means is basically there's some guy, some um, highwayman, let's call it, who's, who's after something. So we've got to make sure we're always able to feed or provide something to this robber. And then as soon as you've done that, you then move it on. Now, what the robber does, it prevents you from doing an action on that card. So let me uh, get show you what the aim of the game is, obviously, to get the most victory points. And I'm going to show you uh, one way of getting victory points. So I've moved these off to the side. These cards are going to have symbols. There are 45 cards. There are five different kinds of symbol. And there are, uh, in that case, nine cards of one type. In a two-player game, both people could achieve what I'm about to show you. If you're able to pay for its cost, which I'll come on to, you can place that card down. Now, you could play a different one, but you, what you want to do is probably play on a different row, like down here. So there'll be a bit more space, and the idea is to have at most three rows and four columns. If you have a row which is uh, four across, and they are all the same symbols, so you've got four palm trees, you're going to score four victory points. You can do that at most for two different rows. Do a third one, you're not going to get anything else. If you do it with four different ones, you get two victory points. I'm guessing the, th the theme for that is you're trying to show that you've got a very diverse tribe that you've got, or maybe it's showing that you're very good with trees. You need to keep trees together, you need to get women together, you need to keep camels together. There's also wells, maybe, I don't know why I need so many wells, but there's well symbols as well. And uh, there's a fifth one, huts, to show you obviously maybe shelter is better, wind or something like that. Additionally on these cards, uh, once you've paid their cost, which I'll just explain these ones instead, you can get a victory point. So you award that at the end. So first time, first uh, move, I look around the edge and see what I fancy doing. So I've already got some resources that's given out initially. So you'll start off with, um, I can't recall exactly, let me just uh, check, something like one salt, one date, one pepper, and one coin. Right, so you start off with two of these each, actually. So it's two salt, two pepper, and two dates. You start off with one coin and four victory points. So again, there's stuff that you can play with. So that's what you're going to start off with. You've seen how I'm trying to lay stuff out. Uh, and one way to game ending is basically getting around here. Another way, which could happen sooner, is laying out 12 cards. Uh, so on your turn, we're looking around here and seeing what we fancy getting. Imagine I went here and I went here, then, and I went, I don't know, over here. There are some cross sections going on. So there's an intersection. This person goes this way. This person goes this way. I can go here. Um, where are the other intersections? Well, coming this way, that's an intersection. Sometimes it's two. Sometimes you could have a different number of intersections. But in, in this example, I've used up all of my complements. What you then do is resolve what you've landed on. So I'll do white in a moment just to show you how the interaction happens. But uh, white would have chucked their stuff out. So let's just go blomp, blomp, blomp. So what could happen here is you're not going to get an extra one. You'd probably have to go there. Uh, let's do that. So blue, say, goes first as the start player. And what happens here is you then take one salt. You take a pepper and dates. And then you take more pepper and salt and another pepper. Now, you can't have more than 10 goods at the end of the round, apart from if it's gold and victory points. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's fine. 
We've also got more dates. So we've gone heavy on getting some stuff. So that's all right. We've got another round to go. Uh, white gets their stuff. And in this instance, uh, let's pretend uh, this we were white. What we have here is for the next turn, your opponent is only able to play two target figures. So not only getting two victory points, reducing what they can do. Playing two target figures means there's one person they can't claim and another thing they can't lay down to get something else as well. So in this instance, you pay what you have. So you pay two pepper, you pay a date, you pay some salt, and you've got that card. You can play that card straight in front of you. You've now got a hut. You can now start working towards maybe four huts or four different things. There are four cards in play. So there's another hut that they're probably going to be after. They could go for a well. They could go for a camel. Maybe I can go for a camel. On my next turn, it's going to be, so uh, I've resolved that. I've taken all this stuff. And they've taken theirs. So blue goes first. You then uh, mark what's been taken. So if this was taken, or we know this one was taken that that you check the backs and suddenly you replace them now you place them face down once blues done theirs and then you uh do white so you can't see what they're about to get so once the other turn has been done they get flipped and the robber moves on now the robber means you can't place uh where the robber is so it's white's turn so now i'm going to show you how the interaction happens uh, so before I just showed you an overview, so now white goes, all right, I'm going to go for a date because they're thinking of going for, well, there's no dates in play. They're going to try and go for uh, this hut here. So they go for this tribal expansion. I'll explain that in a moment. Now, blue really wants to go for this, pay one or fewer uh, good to play an additional camera rider card. It's great to go for early on because then they can pick up this later on, but they cannot go opposite where white is. So immediately like, Darn it, I'll have to go here instead and try and get it this way. Now, why is that? Because they can't go here, they can't go here. If you go to this location, you may move one of your tribe markers from any central card to another unoccupied ca central card. But what white could then do is go this, and it, uh, it can't do that because it's here. So already, blue's guaranteed to get that card. White might go here. I'll explain why in a moment. Um... It's a noble, and then blue's turn, and I don't know, it's, it can't go to these edge cards, which makes sense because of how it interacts. It goes for the silversmith. So imagine again, this is now blue stuff. Every two goods, so it charges two uh, dates, you can chuck them in and get one victory point. So it could help it towards the end of the game. It's one way of getting victory points. You could then spend four ident identical things. Again, hand limit of 10. So it's handy just to thin your hand out a bit and get three victory points or one gold, got a gold to get two victory points or two gold to get four victory points. You can only do it once per turn. So anyway, blue goes there, let's do it randomly and end up trying to get this thing. And perhaps it can't afford it. Imagine we've already spent that gold somewhere. So again, we're chucking out white, we're chucking out uh, whatever's left. Blue uses this thing to go here. White had already picked here and here. So imagine blue can't afford this. It hasn't got a gold coin. Then suddenly it takes into its hand. This means you could play it on your next turn. So this particular one is very interesting, but if you can play it on your next turn, so it's paying those three things on your next turn, suddenly blue's got incentives to want to get some money, want to get certain things to ensure it can do it. White might recall what those things are and try and stop them. But it's blue's turn going next first, so it should be easier for blue to be able to do this. Then it can play the card down. And now you can pay one extra good of any one of the kinds to play the card from your hand without using the noble action. So normally, if you've got a card in your hand, um, you can't pick up any other cards. You've basically lost this card. It's been discarded. So it's encouraging you to play down your cards. So normally, to play down a card that's now in your hand, you've got to go over here. It's like saying, I, I want to do this, sir, and basically asking permission. So if you've got a card in your hand, because you couldn't play it straight away, you have to go here. Funny enough, this particular card allows you to just to spend an extra resource to do the same thing. It has to be one of these ones, so you could spend an extra pepper. If I had this one, so I couldn't afford to pay this one, then I'd have to go here. I must go there to play down this card. So next turn, white knows blue really wants to go here, otherwise it's stuck. So that's something to consider. So as the game continues, you're looking to... Uh, crew stuff, 
new cars will all get flipped over. So, you know, you want to keep an eye to make sure you've got a supply of all kinds of stuff. Just some other cards in play. We've talked about most of these other ones. The trader is similar to the silversmith. You can trade three identical goods for one gold or two identical goods for one other good of your choice. I didn't choose the bottom of those two options in the last game. Money's very tight. I think there's only a couple of money cards in the game. And uh, yeah, there's only oh yeah two plus the one in display. The caravan, great card to use. Reveal the top card from a goods deck and illustrate from the card and you get it. I typically was lucky. I've got lots of twos when I did it. This one's quite obvious. You can pick what you want. Uh, the tribal expansion is very good as well. It lets you blindly pick a tribe card. And if you uh, can do it, if you can pay its cost, you can play it straight down. Uh, if not, you take it into your hand. But remember, the hand limit is only ever one card. But that's Targi. So I think it's a great two-player game. It's a great game in, in itself. It uh, takes about an hour, exactly as it states on the box. The first game will be longer. Um, but including setup and pack down, it's, it's, it's great fun to play. Those first two turns, that first round, it's, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Everything around the outside is always the same. Those actions, you can't take these cards. But what's stuck in the middle is like, all right, I see one, one lake card, or I've, I see two of these, I think... I'm going to try and focus on these, but your opponent takes one. So then you take one to try and stop them getting a, a set. I was able to complete one set and got four victory points. My opponent actually picked up a card which said, for having them all differently, scores you four points instead of two. Uh, the points you get from these cards at the end are, for me, about a third of the points you get at the end of the game. Points I accrued throughout the game as well. I, um, I was able to stay... Uh, probably about a third of those points as well. I also chose to try and spend victory points early on rather than goods. Um, actually, I chose to spend goods rather than victory points. My opponent chose to spend victory points thinking, well, goods are your engine. And whilst that's true, I think, um, you know, I'd imagine victory points are going to need something. It was a 10 point difference. It was 28 to 38. And um, it was amazing how simple this game is. It's just, you go to a place, you get what it is. And then you need that to then pay for something. I like the pieces. I think it's, uh, you know, it makes sense what it is. It's small, nice little cardboardy things, which is square. This fits well together. They slot well together. You know, you don't lose them. You can easily pick them up from the central stack that we, what we went with. Um, how that rubber works means then if I'm suddenly really wanting, you know, Fatima Morgana or Silversmith, by the time it gets there, I need to change my strategy. I and mean, you think, well, I'm going to go for tribal expansion. And then you see your opponent grab it instead. So you think, all right, well, if they're taking that, you know, a single good isn't any good. I'm going to try and get a double instead. But by taking a double, you've got to then use, you know, the equivalent things around the edges to get there. And the risk there is you, um, you might not get ideally what you need. But it's not difficult to consider. It's just about stockpiling resources to get something that gives you cards, gives you cards, gives you stuff, can give you more actions. So this card gives you something on the text and a victory point. This gives you two picture points and nothing but get lots of these or get one of each type and one of four types and you're going to score yourself picture points as well so work with the cards you know there's some cards that you might find uh, might go well together uh, we didn't play through every card in the game but as things go i really liked the theme of it i've been to quite a lot of north african countries not that i'm suggesting it's you know meant to be really really close to uh, that kind of theme but it seemed to you know, provide a lot of insight and interest and intrigue. Could the box be smaller? Slightly, I guess, but I don't think it really matters. You couldn't really play the card the game with just cards. Um, and in terms of how to pack this away, I tend to do them in reverse numerical order. Uh, where you stick these inside cards, well, that's easy. You have the tribe section, you have the goods section. As for these other cards, I just do them again in numerical order. So let's start with where that noble goes down because he's kind of going down first. So this one just means it lets you play cards down from your hand. We've then got the raid card. Uh, let's do it like that. So you now need to pay a coin or three victory points. You get uh, some rice, uh, salt again. This one lets you draw something if you can play it. If not, it goes into your hand. Um, this one uh, is the caravan. It lets you take some goods. This one is discard three goods or two victory points. You get a pepper. 
Silversmith, two to one victory points, four for three, one for two, two to four. Fata Morgana, move somewhere that's unoccupied, pay two goods or a victory point, get some dates, just a single pot, a single pot of uh, pepper, get, uh, spend three goods to get a coin or two goods uh, to get a different one of your choice, a raid, good or a victory point. So again, early on, I guess a a uh, good is probably better in that instance. Um, in terms of what they're worth at the end, some more salt, and I think it's probably that way up. And finally, one times one dates. That is Targi. It's amazing how how he thought this up. I think, in my opinion, I don't think they will need to go in here either. I'm going to chuck out some bits loose, so maybe even it doesn't need to go all that bag. But it doesn't fall around, and it sits in there nicely. Nice small rule book, which does make a lot of sense, but hopefully this video does bring it to life a lot more. I did find at times you're reading the same things over and over again, and it kind of lost my insights. So didn't see too many videos online. I didn't look too hard. We just managed to get through it, but hopefully that does save you some time. So that is uh, Targi. I uh, highly recommend you check it out as a two-player game. It's one of the best out there, and uh, it's 435 grams, so uh, not too shabby either. It says 13 plus. And give it a shot. Thank you very much for watching. I've got some new videos coming along soon and some new games. So if you're keen to see them first, please support and subscribe. And I look forward to bringing them to you. Thank you. Goodbye.